Hey everyone, my name is Derek Livingstone and this is my story. I was born in uh, 1968, um, which makes me 51 to see if you do in the maths. Um, I grew up um, just outside of Huckle in a place called Bally Conley, um, where I had a great upbringing, to, uh, very, two very loving parents. I have a brother called Rodney, who's my twin, and I have a sister called Gillian. I wasn't always a Christian. I grew up in a Christian family. My mum and dad were both Christians and sent me to church, Sunday school, and my social life um, sort of revolved around church and church events, uh, etc. And probably a bit of a sheltered upbringing in some ways. And uh, in my na naivety, I probably assumed that everyone uh, went to church, everyone went to Sunday school. That was just the way things were. And it was probably even through football that I started to realise when I started to play for, for teams outside of boys' brigade football, um, there was a bit more swearing, there was uh, people going drinking, there was uh, people telling dodgy stories in changing rooms. Uh, and that started sort of to awaken me to the fact that I, I was maybe different uh, than other people. Um, and another thing about that was that when you played football, um, you always wanted to fit in. You wanted to fit into the team. You wanted to be part of the team. And um, although football is a great thing, it probably was the thing that started to draw me away from church and draw me away from those sort of, sorts of things uh, and draw me into things that maybe um, uh, it would be better if I wasn't involved in. Being from a Christian background, um, I was different. Um, and I think I went out of my way to try and fit in uh, football-wise. Um, and just in life in general, just to, to, to nearly lose my tag of being like a churchy boy, uh, of being that kind of guy. And as far as I was concerned, I was starting to do these things just to fit in, but that was the only reason I was doing them. It wasn't that I was like everybody else, it was just that um, probably knew in the back of my mind that I knew Christianity was the right way, uh, but I would just try these things. Um, and it was then I started to go out and, and, and socialise and uh, start to drink. I can remember my first drink uh, was in Tully Glass one night. Um, I can remember taking a drink and just again just thinking, well, I'm only, I'm only trying this. And just it was more to let people see um, that I was willing to do this, I was willing to do these things. I was normal. I was like them. Um, even though in the back, back of my mind I was feeling, no, I'm, I'm not really like them. But... That was the start of the slippery slope and it just started to get worse and worse. So one drink led to another, led to getting drunk. Uh, and you know how, how it happens and how it can work. And it was 10 years down the line where I had made a lot of mistakes. I had done a lot of stupid stuff. Um, I had got myself in a lot of trouble. Um, I wasted so much money. Um, and I had become someone um, unrecognisable from what I was before. Uh, and I hadn't seen it happening. Uh, as I took each of those steps away from the Christian life or away from church or away from God, uh, each time I was saying to myself, but I'm not really like these other people. I'm just, you know, I'm just uh, trying this out. Uh, and to lose the churchy tag, I was probably going further than other people would. I was taking a, 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 trying to drink an extra pint than everybody else. I was trying to nearly prove myself all the time. Um, and it took me, I didn't realise it. I didn't see it happening. Um, but it took down, me down a bad path and down a wrong path. Um, one of the the things that really brought me to my senses in some ways, like I say, it was 10 years I was away from church. Um, I was, by now I was going out partying every weekend, I was I was drinking and we were in a place called Tullymore. It's not there anymore, out in Brasheen, some people will remember it. Um, and there used to be a lot of fights outside of it, but I wasn't really a fighter, I never really got involved in anything like that. But this night in particular I came outside and my friend's wife says, Billy's down there getting beat up. And just the drink was in, the wit was out, and I went down to try and help Billy. And I grabbed one of the guys and threw him out of the way and reached down to lift Billy. And as I reached down, the guys turned turned to me. Billy rolled in below a car, and those guys turned to me and just basically beat me up. Um, there was hardly a mark on me below my shoulders. It was just all up around my head, just using my head nearly like a football. Um, I got hit in the back of the head with a bottle. Um, I'd end up with eight staples in the back of my head. My nose was broke, big bust lip. Um, just a real mess. And as much as I can sit here and maybe laugh about it now, it wasn't funny at the time. It was a scary thing. I really, at that point, I thought these guys are going to kill me here. Um, and that night, sitting, I ended up going into hospital and sitting in the hospital. Um, there was a nurse come in, and I remember looking at the nurse, and I was sitting, the drink had died in me by now. It was like uh, the hangover was starting, and 
I was a miserable looking sight and I says to the nurse, you're probably looking at me and thinking, you know, this is just a typical guy on a Saturday night, you know, he's a dodgy sort of boy. I said, but you know, I'm not really like that. That's not the type of person I am. But as I spoke those words, they rang hollow. Uh, that was the night that I realised that this is what I am. This is what I have become. I was so far removed from what my family were like, uh, from what I had been taught, uh, and I hadn't seen it happening. Um, and here I was, just a, a mess. Uh, and it made me start to think about my life. It made me start to look um, at some of my choices in life. Um, it made me start to look at the fact that my house uh, at home was almost like a party house. People just would have called in all hours uh, just for a party in my house. That's what I had become. That's what I had become known for. Um, and I was just so far from God. And, um, the, the, the scare of death brought me to my, my senses a bit and was thinking to myself, well, what if I had died? What if something happened to me? Is there more? Is there something else? And this set me on a journey of discovery, a, a journey of, of going to church and going to, some, or going to these places now, this time not because I was made to go by my parents, but this time because I really was curious. I really wanted to find out answers. And I spoke to friends at work. I spoke to Christian people I knew on the sly. Nice and quiet. Nobody knew what was going on, just to find out more. And as as I found out more, as I as I learned more about God's word, and I learned more about um, about being saved, um, I, I come to my senses, and I was eventually, um, well, about a year later, until I got to that stage where I just said, "That's it. Uh, this is what I need. Um, I need to change my life, and I can't change my own life because it's something I've done over that year was try to be a better person." Try to be a good person. Try to stop doing these bad things and stop swearing. And what I found was I had good intentions, but maybe not even that day down the line I would, I'd sworn or I had I'd maybe fell into with friends going out for drinks or whatever. And I just couldn't keep it. I just couldn't change myself. And I wasn't happy the way I was. And I know now that that was God convicting me. That was him showing me uh, that I, my life was wrong and I needed to change. It seems strange why do I want people to hear a gospel message? What do I gain from it? Um, and I don't really gain anything from it. I don't gain financially. I don't gain uh, in any way. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, get me my way to heaven. Um, because what I do for God is not trying to earn my way to heaven. Uh, the things I am doing, God for for God, or doing God has me doing. I'm doing them as a response to what He's done for me. All those wrong things I have been doing, all those sinful acts, all the disasters that I have made, um, I was hurting people along the way. I was hurting myself. I wasn't living the way God wanted me to do. And, you know, I discovered that he was willing to forgive me. I was discovering that because um, I, he knew I couldn't change myself, that he already had a plan, that I could be saved, that I could uh, change. And the plan was to send his son Jesus to die on the cross to take the sin or take the punishment I deserve for my sin uh, so that I might be set free. And then when, when you learn that and when you experience that freedom and that uh, um, that burden being lifted, that, that, that thing that you're feeling guilty about and you're feeling bad about, and when you experience it, that, that that's all been taken away from you, that gives you a, a different perspective of life. You become a new creation, the Bible says. You become a different person. And it's put something into me that is so special, the peace that it brings, the comfort that it brings. And how could I then not want to tell people about that? How could I then not want people to know about that? Um, so that's why I now do what I do uh, as in sports ministry, as in um, going and telling people about God. I work for an organisation now called Ambassadors Football, uh, which again, I have travelled um, quite a few areas in the world, uh, being able to tra train coaches, uh, is something that I got to do. Um, first time I'd done it was in Congo, and then I'd done it in, in Kenya, going over and training their coaches so that they can uh, learn the basic practical skills of coaching, but also understand the um, the biblical aspect of it and how they can use it uh, to share their faith. Um, God has took me and helped me to do things that I never thought I would do.